Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game, another one. I'm back on the 49 shave. These old 49 shaves has a two-piece quarter panel, and they were joined in through here. And over the years, when this car is customized, someone grinded all this section here really thin. It was supposed to be leaded along here, and it's all been grinded off, and it all had to be replaced. I turned around and replaced the entire section all the way around here with strips of metal, removed the factory seams, removed the whole works of it out all together, so that way it's all now one continuous panel, okay? I turn around and got that done. Also, one of you guys sent me something very cool. Stick around. So I'm getting back at the 49 fleet line. Uh, last video, I turned around and made this skirt for this one here. I got to do one for the other side yet, but I want to finish off this side completely. And what I mean by finishing off, up here, these quarter pounds on the 49s were joined in through here. Now, if you look closely, you can see there's bad spots lying here. Someone grinded all this down at one point or another, okay? And grinded extremely thin, okay? So what I got to do now is I got to repair all this. And all I'm going to do is a simple little process. I'm just going to do the cotton butt. I'm going to make strips to go along here. I'm going to cut that out and put strips in there and weld in place. Not going to get too carried away, but just a simple little thing I'm going to do. You can sit down and try to weld all this up again, but it's just going to be a nightmare, okay? So I'm going to turn around and I'm not going to remove nothing. I'm just going to get strips now. Then I'm going to cut probably an inch and a quarter wide or so and come up here. I'm not going to make a big long piece going from one to the other uh it'll be get tangly and the problems you got when you start welding larger pieces is that it's going to want to turn on you and then you can't bring it back it's very you got to cut it to bring it back so i'm going to do probably like you know 24 inches cut a piece 24 inches and do the cut and butt in there and then just move on from there going right on up and just make a full piece to go in there so i'm going to go ahead now cut out a piece and get started so first thing I'm going to do is go, and go through my scrap bins here. I have a bunch of scrap I've been saving for a while over here that I got kicking around, different sizes. What's this here? Yeah, there you go. Let's take that there now. Oh yeah, that'll work. I'll just trim that off there now and just use this section here. That'll be my first piece. So I got that trimmed off, just a piece there I cut off it, just a flat piece. So then I went over here and I got bins here on the side here full of small scrap pieces and I found a whole bunch of lengths there. So I'm going to go through them there and use them for the rest of it. So I'm going to turn around and get this cleaned up and get started and I'm going to leave the white on one side and I'm just going to clean up the top side of it. That way there's a bit of protection on the inside and uh, I'll turn around and get that ready to fit in. So here now, and I got it all sanded off, leaving this side alone here. What I want to do is I want to put a slight crown on this piece here, going through it. I don't want to have it completely flat. So all I'm doing, I'm just laying, I have the voice opened up. Ah, it looks to be about three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to take my tea dolly and just lay it there like so. And just tap it down and work my way along. Big, I just want to put a positive crown on it. So just got a little, slight little crown on it. The one nothing too big, just enough to uh, have it so that it's got a roll to it. I'll dolly that up a bit there now and then go over and test it. Now I'm not going to touch none of this here, I'm not going to cut nothing out. All I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this in place where I like to have it. 
I clean off top of this first, as I'm going to do. I'm just going to size it up here now, and I'm just going to fit this on the top of this here, tack well, place it on there, and then start cutting it out. So I got this all cleaned up here now, up as far as I got to go with that piece there. And I went down here and I started the first section here. I cut it straight across here just to make sure I got good metal. So I got that all trimmed up. So what I'll do is I'll line that up there on that there and I'll set it up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead, line that up, and I'm just going to overlap it. Not going to worry about it. I'm just going to weld it right onto the car, right where it's to. And then I'll cut it to fit after the fact. This is all I done. I just overlapped it, tacked it in place, right? And by tacking it in place, you find out how solid the metal is on either side. Down here, I got a bit of a thin spot, and I say it's because of a lot of the grinding and everything. And I had the welder turned up, so I started burning hole, turned down a small bit, and the welder best grind. So you can see now where I got this here cut across here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up here and start cutting the piece to fit the car inside here and then work my way to the outside i might just work my way around now, the problem you got with this is a narrow piece so you can't go both sides at a time you got to treat this as this is all uh, close to each other this is the same cut as this here so you can't well over here and well over here because you're gonna have too much heat in it right so you got to watch that so i'm going to start doing the cutting butt here now and work up so far probably come as far as here get this all butt well in place and then move on from there and keep going
So here's where I'm to now. I got it all tack welded in place and I worked along it and I found that I had to go back sometimes and cut some of the stuff twice because uh, it was really wide or it wasn't really wide it wasn't when I had to push down on it used to close the gap right up and you could see like some spots like right here there's absolutely no gap look going along there like that some of the gaps pretty well went away and I had to cut them a couple of times see how small they are look up here now got a little bit wide but nothing serious right but there's the piece I cut out that's the easiest way to replace that old rusty old piece on the back side of it there and now I got rid of all that there grinding and everything, all the mess that they had made with that there. So I can turn around now and I'll go back down. I'm going to tack weld this so it's welded every inch. And I'm going to go ahead and weld it up. This here is a pretty structural piece, so I should be able to put a bit more heat into it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead now and uh, spot weld this up. Weld it every inch or so. And uh, when it comes back, then I'll go back and I'll fill in the inch. I don't know if I'm going to weld every bit. Because this here now, where this is on a rolled edge, you can probably get a bit more heat into it. So I'll probably weld like a couple of spots here and a couple of spots here and a couple of spots here, that type of thing, right? So I'll go ahead now and get this all welded up. So I got that all welded in, nothing pretty. Before it goes any further, what I'm welding in here is 18 gauge metal and the welding into the car, I've, I use 18 gauge on everything, no matter what gauge the car on the car, because it gives me something to grind to. Um, the gas wire I'm using is 023 wire and I'm just using CO2 gas. My settings on the welder, uh, it all depends on the different welders. You're gonna have to set them up accordingly. Uh, different welders have different settings when you set them up for sheet metal uh, so I figured I'd cover that so now I got this here uh, all welded in I'm going to sit down and grind it all up you know you never have to worry about making your welds all I'm worried about is having nice hot welds something I know so I can get good penetration with and like don't ever worry about trying to get a roll of nickels because you're grinding it anyway so it really doesn't matter I'm going to be grinding this off with my layer grinder and a 24 grit disc okay they're a Norton disc there uh, F80, are they? F80s? What's the number on them? Here we go. F98s. F98s. So I'm going to go ahead now, grind all this down, see how much more we're going to be welded up. I'm going to finish this section off all together before I move on to anything else. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself, so I'll get this all done so I'm happy with it, and then I can move on to the next section. So there it is after the first grinding up. I got some spots down here that I missed. Or I'm gonna have to redo again down here in this corner here. And the rest of it come up pretty good, right? 
It's a little bit, the previous welding on this here, like this here is not what he calls for his whip, let me tell you. But it's uh, good enough, right? So I got that there straight away. I'm gonna weld up in a few spots now, finish this off, get this all stripped off here now to get started on this one. So I went ahead, got everything welded up again, grinded it off, and I cleaned all this section off up here as we're going, and I come up to here, and my next section, up here. This is the worst spot of them all. This here is after being grinded through too many times, and there was nothing left there, so I got, I want to start off with a bigger piece, okay? I was going to run a large section down here, but I gotta show you something here. When I run this here, this is a straight edge here, down along here, you will find that it doesn't follow the flow very good, okay? And where this turns off like this here, the piece of metal is gonna be very hard to roll off. You could do it, yes, but I'm just trying to simplify this and just do it in sections. That way I don't get too far ahead of myself. Like, you don't turn around and cut all this off and then try to put a whole piece in there. I'm just doing it in sections as I'm going. That way it's uh, a lot more manageable and I can work it a lot easier and I'm not disturbing too much of the panel itself. So I went ahead and I got the piece of metal made up. You can see the little crown I got put in it. And I also put a little crown on it that way so it fit on the panel here, like so. That'll fit there. But all I used was, like I said, the vise, the T dolly, and I got this old dolly. This dolly here is probably one of my first body tools I ever bought. I think I bought this when I was 13 years old. It came from Canadian Tire, came with a hammer and a dolly. And this is the only dolly it had. And it's an old cheap dolly, you can tell it is beat round. And I've got this car, I got this dolly now over 30 years, and then some, I'd say. Well, 13, mm -hmm, do the math. Okay, we won't do the math on that. But I got that a long time, and I still use it to this day, and I still find it. I can find these shapes on a lot of stuff, and I like where it's got like a little handle in the middle here. It's not like a, a lumped style dolly, because most you get are uh are all joined together and stuff like this one here it's got a little handle in the middle of it and i don't know i just not like it and it's got some nice curved shapes on it and i just laid that on that and dollied that over that and i got the shape to it but i'm gonna go ahead now i'm gonna tack this in place here now lay this over this here tack it in place then start doing cotton butt on that and get that piece replaced before i get started um i want to send a shout out to tom mccartney He's from Ontario, Canada. He sent me a little package in the mail, and I can honestly tell you, I never knew these existed, okay? Uh, a lot of you guys sees me welding all the time with no helmet, okay? I've had a technique I've used where I've been in the body trade a long time. I don't use a helmet. I just hide, my, hide the tip of the gun. Um, I hide the arc of the weld behind the tip of the gun, so I never see the weld. I don't look at what I'm welding. It's just a, a technique I picked up. And he sent me these, and I never knew they, exa they existed. I'm going to give them a try here today, and I'll see what they're all about. Here they are here, look. A pair of glasses. they got the uh, lens in it. I never knew they existed. I knew you can get them in smaller goggle-style ones, but I didn't know you can actually get them in eyeglasses. Now, the problem I got with them is uh, I, I wear glasses, okay? And uh, i got to wear them now, getting old. So I got to, I had to wear glasses, and I played around with them. And they, they fit right over my glasses. See? Oh, geez, take them out. I, these are small glasses. got just small rim dollar store glasses. But these do fit right over the top of them, like to know. So I'm going to give these a try. <laughs> I'll see what they're all about. I looked them up. They're on Amazon. Okay? You can pick them up. Uh, tintable glasses. Um, welding gla glasses. Anything like that. You look on Amazon and they're, they're all over the place. It's pretty neat. I never knew that something like this existed. So I'm going to give them a try there now and see what they're all about. Don't I look cool?
it works deadly. I can see what I'm working on here, and when I wins, it turns on. Unreal. Now I would recommend these for like full-time welding, okay? You should always wear a helmet. There's still UV rays you're gonna get from all this. Everybody's on my case about it, I know. Well, don't do as I do. That's the biggest thing with me. Uh, but I think these here, I see a lot of fellows uh, going to be at this. Uh, these are pretty neat for getting this tack stuff in place or in, in hard spot. I figured if you took something like this here and then put a sandblasting helmet on over it, something like that, something with an open face on it, uh, like with a lens, that it'll cover your face over. You could probably use it for tight quarters. Uh, I think it'd be great for that because when I was at the roll cage in the Mustang, I had a hard time. I couldn't wear a helmet in places and that. But I think something like this now, with like a leather helmet or some sort, uh, that'll just like a hood of le a leather hood that you can pull down over your head. That it should work out pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead now, get these cell here tacked well in place, and uh, start cutting on that. So I got that in place, and I got the piece broke clear on the bottom. It's still in there, hung down a small bit, but it's all let go. When I get the wheel everything off, I can reach up and grab it because there is no wheel well in this. I gotta put that in later. But as you can see, uh, I'm here at this here now, and I had to cut a few up in this corner. I had to rework it a couple times. Things three attempts I made it at this corner to get this right. Now's the time to get this right. Like you know, if you think you're, you're going to get it after your wells, it, it's not going to happen, right? You got to get this here so it feels good, it looks good. This was coming up and had a dip in it, and then it was coming uphill and it was low right here, and I had to get that up and out of there in order to get this right. So I made three attempts of it to get it, right? Um, like some of you may have talked about going back to the welding bit helmet thing again. While I was at this, I was thinking about it again as well. One of the main reasons why that I haven't wearing helmets over the years is because of this stuff. The tintable helmets came in, they were pretty good. They're still dark, okay? It's hard to see this stuff, okay? See these edges and stuff like that. So every one of these spot welds that are in this here and got to be worked, the helmet has to be taken off. And it was always an issue that, like, you know, you take a helmet up, you fit it, and it got frustrating after a while. Helmet, you know, you have your helmet down, helmet up, helmet down, helmet up, helmet down, helmet up, helmet down, helmet up, you know. It just gets re, re you know, like most fellas that are welding and using helmets and talking about you got to wear a helmet and stuff like that are sitting down running beads, okay. That, that's fine as kind. Uh, the problem with it is metal moves. This metal is sitting here, and every time you weld it, it wants to do this or do this, okay? So you have to check it every single time that you're welding, okay? After you weld a spot here, you've got to check the spot next to it because it's probably going to change. It's not like heavy plate steel where it just sits there, and then you can run a, like a two-inch bead on it, and nothing's going to really move. It'll, it'll move a small bit, but nowhere near as much as sheet metal does, right? So, And that's one of the main reasons why you see me doing what I'm doing. I don't recommend it. I recommend wearing helmets. All that stuff. These glasses now, uh, they're a godsend. Uh, they're going to be pretty good. But still, I can't see this here when I'm when I'm doing the tack welds. On. It's still a dark lens, okay? When you take them helmets, I don't know if I can do this look through the helmet. You're looking at that there and then looking through that helmet, okay? You cannot see that metal, okay? As good as you can see that. This is the problem I got. With the welding like you can move in on that there and you got the shadow of the helmet all that type it's very hard to see those edges okay and that's one of the reasons why i do it like i do it's uh, a technique i picked up a very long time ago when you look at a weld most fellas will weld and you'll, you'll see the tip of the weld like that okay they're welding along like this here and they're welding along here and they're looking right at their spot weld now see just pretend i was doing that spot weld there this is what I'd be doing. I wouldn't even see that spot weld, okay? I move over to this one, I wouldn't even see. It's just a technique of knowing where the, the uh, tip of the gun is at each time I come across. This is all I do. This way here, you're gonna get a flash. This way here, with a pair of safety glasses on, it uh, you, you shouldn't get a flash because you're not looking directly at the arc itself. All you're getting is bright light through it. it. You're still getting UV rays, all that type of stuff. Yes, I understand all that, right? I've been at this a long time, there's no difference in it. I know what I'm doing is not what I call proper, uh, but for what work I do, I do this um, a lot. And I find that this technique here for me was probably the best technique that I've ever found 
for getting stuff done because I can keep an eye on all this. Look, I come over here and I weld this here. I can see this spot here. I can tap it up and down, move on to this spot here, move on to this spot here. You know, going on like that. With a helmet, you can't see it. It's very hard to see. Very hard to see all what's going on, even with them lenses like that, okay? They do still have a tint to them. You can still see through them and all that. It's great. You can get an idea where you've got to put your tip. But you can't see what's going on with the metal. Is that metal, is that spot there high? Is that spot low? You can't see it very good through them, them lenses, okay? So that's just a little update on one of the reasons why I weld like I do. Um, like, you know, it's time consuming to, to for me to actually wear a helmet, to put it on, to take it off, to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. And that's what's happening. I'm very concerned about these edges, Okay. Most fellas that are welding constantly are welding beads. Their, their sheet metal doesn't turn out like this, okay? And the reason why this turns out like this here is because I spend a lot of time right here doing what I'm doing right here, getting this to fit here so I can get my finger to go across all these here. And there's a nice finish across through them. Get them all inch apart. So I figured I'd just talk about that a bit more so you get an understanding of it and uh, know why I do what I do. So... I'm going to go ahead now and going to get this all welded in so I can get this grinded up and have this panel finished. Now you just saw me there doing the spot welds along here and then cooling it off and then after cooling off going up and doing the spot welds. One thing you got to realize, you think that you can actually turn around, do this side here and then go up here and weld this side here. I've always had a guy of when I'm welding two inches or about an inch and a half, two inches all the way around the weld, okay? So if I was welding this one here, everything around this section here is getting affected by it, okay? So the heat transfer is going right outside here. So this side here is getting heat transfer. So if I goes over here and starts welding this one over here, I got this much. So now I got heat transfer over here. So now I got a lot more heat in this area here. This is where the warp reach is going to come from. You think you can actually weld a narrow piece in a metal like that and weld it around this side, weld it down this side here. But you're going, you got a chance of warping it more. That's why I turn around, I weld it this side, I cool it. I weld it this side, I cool it. I'll go back and weld this side and I'll cool it. I weld that side and cool it. If not, I'll end up warping this if I don't go at that, okay? You can play around with it. You can actually tack weld in place and everything. But I find that uh, it's got a tendency to get away from you. So just want to point that out to you. I'm going to go ahead now and get this all welded up. There you have it. I've had to grind it up and then I re welded a couple spots, re grind it again. Not all completed. I'm good to back to here now. Now, from here on in, this is really cutting in tight, so I don't need to curve no metal. I just use flat pieces. Uh, if I go too long with the pieces, like this here has a, a banana shape to it when you look at it, when you're trying to roll it down over the edge here. So if you try to use longer strips, you're going to have to have a banana shape to it in order to work work it. And I'm just doing it as simple as I can. And all I'm going to do now is just going to take that piece there, lay that over that there, tack weld it in place, and then do the cotton bud on it. Now I have a small dent here. If you look at it, you can see it there. There's a dent. Comes right on out through there. And uh, my piece of metal is going to pass right through it. So what I went and did is I marked it where the piece of metal is going to do it. I'm going to go in here and just blindly cut a large section out of here. Just so I can get in behind this here. And I'm going to tap this up and straighten up this dent here.
So you see me there doing the cutting butt on that there. I worked my way down one side, fitting as I went, and then I started coming down the other side. But what I did on this side here, because it's such a small piece, I went and cut the whole section out of it. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to push the old piece away from it. Now it's probably still hanging in there, but I can get at it from the inside and I can reach up and grab it and break it off later on. I just didn't want to leave it attached to the car because sometimes when you leave the piece in there and you don't separate it, what ends up happening, you'll end up welding it all together and that piece ended up getting welded on. It's very hard to remove then. So I cut all this here so I can get in behind it so I can push down on that piece to break it off. Uh, you see me going back then, checking all my edges, and I come across a scattered spot I didn't like, and I recut it and rewelded it again. Um, this is the time that I spend most of my time cutting and fitting. Once I got a cut and fitting and I'm happy with the fit, I can just go ahead and weld all it up, and it should come down pretty easy. You can see it a lot of times when it's high and when it's low. You can see it. And uh, if it's, it, you're, there's not a thing you can do with it. If you just figure, well, I'll get that, and I'll weld that, and I'll fix that with the grinder. No, okay? you got to try to have these edges nice and smooth, overlapping nice, and that way that you got less work to do from here on in, right? So now I'm just going to go ahead, get this all welded up, and get it all grinded up. So i got another one done. Another section done, all clued up. i got one more section to do down here now, and I started sizing things up there, and this is what I end up coming up with. Trying to use a flat piece was not going to work, so I had to cut this piece out. As you can see, if I lay it against this here and push it down on it the way it's shaped. So I got that there now, so that'll actually fit in there like so. And I can actually do the cutting butt on that and get that one welded in. So I'm not going to bore you with the same thing. It's the same process I've done up here. I'm just going to go ahead, cut that out, weld that on, and do the cutting butt on that, remove that piece, weld that in, grind and dress it. There you have it. That section's all done. Grind it up. I had to come back and re-weld a few spots again. Regrind it. But I got a whole thing replaced now all the way along there. So all the seam is gone there in the weak metal. Everything is solid back through there again now. So you can look down through that there. You can see it's a nice uh, section here all been replaced. Now it's going to need bodywork people. I don't expect what I do here to be uh, metal finished because uh, it needs a lot more hours put into it than what I got put into it. This here is uh, going to be filled. All that type of stuff will be done to it. So it's, uh, it's a street rod, right? So it's a custom, full custom. But I'm very pleased with that. I got one quarter panel complete now. Got the skirt made. I got all the quarter made for it. Taillight section is done. All the top side is done. So now I can move on and do the other quarter panel. I'll get that done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that quarter panel done and I'm going to move on to this trunk lid then. This trunk lid will be my next project. So I got to remove all this here. I got to work on getting the, rid of these seams here that have been done on it. That's all lap welds. So I'm going to work on that. Get a nice seam all the way around it. Work on that. But for now, I'm going to leave this one here. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope the tips were good. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, hit like and share. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe down the bottom of the page. If you want to donate to the channel, down below there's a button, super thanks button. If you want to click on that, it'll take you through the motions of making donations to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. We also got merchandise. Pop over to fitziesfabrications.com and check out our merchandise. We have hoodies, sweaters, t-shirts, and stickers. Lots to choose from. Thanks for watching.